Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Surely one of the most random uh, channels on YouTube for anyone who has stuck with me through the meandering uh, topics up here. Thank you very much. I appreciate the uh, continued viewing and subscribing and support of the channel. I want to tackle today a topic that I personally find interesting because I'm really interested in data storage. And that's this um, technology called MDisk. I've just gone ahead and ordered my first, uh, I've ordered a Blu-ray reader writer that does MDisk and I've ordered a stack of MDisks. Now, MDisks are really interesting. I've been looking for a while for a data storage medium that's suitable for long-term long cold shelf storage. That means uh, data that you can just leave on a shelf as opposed to having sitting in an NAS. Now, um, I take my backups very seriously and as a now as a quite active YouTuber, I'm producing on a daily basis a decent amount of data. I've talked before about a lot of stuff related to backups and how for me personally, off-site isn't uh, a cloud backup isn't really much of an option because of how bad my internet connection is so i'm doing an off-site uh, manually backup putting the data in someone else's house uh, but in any event whether whether you're just doing on-site or you're doing a proper three two one backup approach which involves on-site and off-site it probably makes sense that you want the both classes of data to be as stable as possible right so the problem with traditional uh, storage media, and by traditional, I'm talking about what most people would think of when you said, hey, I want to store a bunch of info. You'd say, uh, I guess, by a hard drive or by one of those plug-in hard drives, whatever. So that's actually, I've been using that. I've been dumping data off my NAS onto a hard drive uh, enclosure and filling that up as I produce more video data from this YouTube channel. I don't just uh, store the videos. I also store some sometimes the original clips uh, sometimes I store what's called a video bureau. So that's filling up, filling up, filling up as I produce more videos every day. And I've been dumping that onto a hard drive. Now, the problem with that approach is that hard drives are not good for long-term storage. They're not intended for that use case. Hard drives are supposed to be sitting in computers where the operating system hopefully has some kind of a system for detecting data degradation. Now, that's something called data rot or bit rot. And basically, uh, data stuff like hard drives and even flash drives and soft drives, flash storage technology will over time degrade. That's due to uh, depolarization, uh, the way that the data stored involves magnetism and that magnetism will flip and eventually the data will become unreadable. So that's why you don't really want to use ideally hard drives for archival or shelf storage. So I've been posting on a subreddit, posting and lurking on a subreddit called data hoarder um, which is basically where lunatics like me come to talk about their data retention problems. And um, I eventually, so I found some good threads and I eventually found one that suited my use case. Someone said the same thing, you know, I'm looking for a really good storage medium for just keeping my data on a shelf. What do you recommend I use? And someone said, well, probably M-Discs. And I was like, what are M-Discs? So M-Discs are basically, um, they exist for Blu-ray and for DVD. And it's a really interesting story. It's this company, they've actually gone bankrupt, but now they've uh, given their technology over to Verbatim. That's a really well-known, um, really big uh, player in this data protection space. And Verbatim use our technology. So what the technology is, optical media like CDs, DVDs, uh, et cetera, Blu-rays are actually much less susceptible to bit rot than flash media. If you think about it, it has to be because you may, if you think about a CD, now people don't use CDs anymore. You listen to music streamed from Spotify or YouTube, but back when CDs were a thing, that data written on the CD and put into your CD player had to stick around for years because that was where the data was coming from, not from the internet. So these are actually, ironically, even though they're today thought of as very old school, um, used still extensively in archive. Now, the thing about M-Disc and why an M-Disc is different than a regular Blu-ray or DVD is the vulnerability of these optical media is that the layers that the disc, disc is comprised of will actually degrade. Whereas for M-Disc, they have used this, what they call a proprietary organic matter that they liken to writing data into a rock. And apparently it's much more solid and stable. Uh, so that's really the only difference. So most, you'll find Blu-ray and DVD reader writers that will support M-Disc. I think it just needs a different type of laser. Now, my question was, okay, this sounds awesome. So firstly, I'm buying one of these things, absolutely. So I did, I ordered a um, Blu-ray 
writer reader that is capable of doing mdisks and hopefully will support linux and i ordered myself a spindle of blank mdisks so that i can begin transferring my nas data which is all this youtube data onto the mdisks and that's going to be my long-term storage i'm going to have a cd folder with all my mdisks in them hopefully if this works so my next question was well this is great i'm super excited about this and i am expect videos on this topic coming soon but how just out of curiosity does this stack up on a cost basis now i'm not asking this because i'm a cheapskate and i'm not a cheapskate i think i'm asking this because when you're thinking about data and long-term data preservation approaches you want to think about scale you don't want to think about just how much does this little first order cost you're going to think your video is going to be growing and growing um how much over when that expands from gigabytes to terabytes to even maybe petabytes of data how much is that is it can you expect one to cost versus the other so i'm going to try to answer that question in this uh video so what i did i prepared this little uh spreadsheet here on google sheets and i'm going to uh just just put it together real quick here well as quick as i can i'm doing this live this is unedited so this is firstly um what i bought today this is verbatim's 25 spindle of 25 gigabytes now they make these also in 50 and 100 gig uh, uh uh units and uh you can see a little picture of the 100 gig one here if i hover onto it uh they're all written lifetime archival so this is exactly the type of thing i've been looking for for years i never knew these things existed uh until i read about them on reddit so it's 25 um so what i'm going to do is i'm actually just going to firstly enter this 64 dollars uh i'll go back to my product here the one i actually bought so 64 dollars and 97 cents so I'm just going to plug that in. So my product here is an M disk, and I'm going to compare this to something much less exotic, just a terabyte hard drive from Newegg, right? So I'm just going to see on a terabyte per USD uh, basis, which how much more expensive M disk works out. I'm pretty sure it's going to be more expensive. Uh, so this is uh, actually verbatim M disk, uh, M disk with a C, and it's BDR technology, which is a uh, readable. Um, uh, blue blu-ray um, and it's 25 gigabit version and it's uh, a spindle spindle of 25 okay I'm just gonna quickly drop in the link to and this is gonna be an Amazon product um, now the capacity is gonna be it's 25 a spindle and 25 gigs each so that's actually not terabytes it's Gigabytes. So let's do let's do gigabytes here instead. So I bought myself 625 gigs by buying this 25 pack of 25 gig discs. And let's also change this to USB per, per gigabyte. The cost was $64.97. Now I'm not factoring in the ancillary costs. And these actually just want to say one quick more point about one more quick point about MDisc. Another reason why when I looked at other uh, other media that were commonly recommended on Reddit and elsewhere for archival, the big one being LTO. The problem with LTO is that you need to pay $3,000 for a drive. So there's a very high upfront capital cost and LTO only goes backward one generation. So this to me seemed like the perfect mixture, this MDisc stuff. Well, you know, it's about a hundred bucks to buy yourself an MDisc, excuse me, capable reader writer you know, that's not super expensive. And so if this works, fantastic. For $200, I can try it out, you know, versus putting $3,000 just into an LTO drive that may be deprecated soon. Um, so again, I'm getting 625 gigs for $64.97. Uh, so I'm going to divide equals E2 over D2. So that's basically 10, rounding off here, that's basically 10 cent per gigabyte, okay? I hope I've done that right. Mathematics are not my strong point. I keep reiterating that, uh, but it is unfortunately true. I'm, re I'm good with words. I'm not amazing with numbers. I wouldn't say I'm innumerous, uh, but I'm not as good with, uh, with that. So let's go now and uh, find ourselves a, uh, I'll just put into Google here, new egg hard drives. It's sometimes easier to do it like this than navigating through their huge website. I'm just gonna pop that open here. So I'm looking for desktop internal hard drives. And we're gonna get our hard drives. 
And I said, I'm going to look for a terabyte, uh, terabyte, because that's just like a very standard, as I did a video yesterday, they go all the way these days up to uh, 20 uh, terabytes, which is pretty gigantic. So let's take, um, what would I want to use for archive? Well, probably I'd want to use an archival class because they do exist, these things. But uh, for the purpose of simplicity, let's just, uh, no, let's do this right. Archive HDD, I was searching for it last night. Uh, and we'll actually look at an eight, gigab eight gigabit one. Uh, so where, here we go, here, here's our guy. So that's 170, let's just do this one for a comparison. So this is Seagate Archive and it's a, eight terabytes for $175. So going back into the spreadsheet, we're gonna be looking at the Seagate Archive HDD um, eight terabyte model from Newegg. Here is the link. If anyone wants this for download, I can uh, send me an email, I'll send it to you. I'm just storing this on my own personal Google Drive for the moment. Um, the capacity is eight terabytes, so that's 8,000 gigabytes. The cost is $174.99. Uh, and, and now if we divide uh, E3 Sorry, yeah, E3, oh, oops, equals E3, 3 over D3. Wow, okay, so basically, um, in sense, I'm just gonna say in human, this guy is 10 cent per gigabyte, and this guy is 2 cent per gigabyte. Now that's, that's rounding, it's 10 cent, and this is uh, 0.21, but anyway, 2 cents, a gigabyte versus 10 cent. So the answer from the analysis that I've done here is that uh, it is indeed more expensive to store your data in MDisk format, even comparing it to archival class hard drive storage HDD, which is typically uh, gonna be a little bit cheaper than hard drive storage intended for, um, you know, for use in a computer because, uh, because it's archival, they're gonna be giving you basically really, really low write speeds because it's, it's, it's what's called often worm data, write once, read many times. So the write is intended, is the write, the, they, they, get, they, they, can't, they try to lower the cost by making it really slow to write and uh, usually normal read speeds. So these are typically actually cheaper than regular hard drives because they're just optimizing the uh, storage and uh, degrading the performance. So even comparing to a hard, an archive class hard drive, we're finding those are actually five times cheaper than MDisk. However, even though it's five, time, five times more expensive on the flip side uh, to use MDisk for your cold archival storage, you do have the benefit that if it's uh, if it actually is secure as a claim for 100 years slash a lifetime, well, I think most people would agree it would be worth. There's it's if you waste money on a if you spend however cheap the hard drive is if it loses all your data it's a disaster. Uh, so it's a complete false economy. So I think that but it was still good to know what the difference is. Thank you guys for watching another one of my uh, cost comparison videos for data and storage geeks. The TLDR of this video is that uh, M disks cost about five times more on a uh, USD per gigabyte date uh, basis. They're costing uh, 10 cents per gig. Whereas uh, nowadays, given that storage has come down so far in cost for a uh, archival HDD, it's actually only 2 cents USD per gig uh, to store your data in one of those. Hence, it's quite a bit cheaper. Hope this video was useful. If you want to get more videos from me, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.